Shalom. Today we're continuing the Hebrew verb structure lecture. We are working in the imperfect or future tense. As you know, the suffixes and prefixes for the future tense are standard throughout all the binyanim. Today we will cover both the PL and the nifal for a reason which you will see. Starting with the nifal, we will use the root davar, deber, which means to speak. So one of the clues that you find of the imperfect in the PL is that it will have an extra syllable compared to the pa'al. So in the pa'al, the future tense, I will guard, esh more, has two syllables. Here, for the imperfect, I will speak, it's a, da, bear, there are three syllables. So we have a change in the vowel configuration and we see all the conjugation here. Adaber, tidaber, tidabri, yidaber, tidaber. Remember that she and you masculine singular are the same in the imperfect tense. We will speak nidaber, tidabru, this fancy feminine plural form, tidaberna, which is for both the second and third person. And the third person plural, they will speak yidabru. So here are some examples from Tanakh. In Numbers 12.8, Yerhebabhe is admonishing Miriam and Aaron for speaking against Moses. And he says as part of his chastisement, Pe el pe adaber bo. Mouth to mouth, I will speak to him. Meaning that uh, Yahweh will speak to Moses. In Genesis 31.24, Laban has gone off chasing after Jacob, who has left with his extended family. And in the night, God comes to him in a dream to Laban, and he says, He shamer lecha, watch out for yourself. Pen to daber im Yaakov mito ad ra. Lest, in case, you will say, or speak with him, and you might say something good or something bad. In Job 2.10, Job is talking to his wife, and he says, You're talking like a foolish person. Kedaber achat han valot. Like the speaking of one foolish, tidaberi, you are speaking. So it's got a little extra, little extra vowel in there. Tidabri, tidaberi. In Exodus 6.10, and maybe about 75 other places, it says, Vayidaber Yehovah el Moshe lemor. And Yehovah spoke to Moses, saying, So again, remember, this is the Vav conversive. It's conjugated in the future tense, Yidaber, but we read it in the past tense. In Genesis 44, 16, uh, the brothers have been caught by Joseph with his cup in Benjamin's bag. And so Judah says to Joseph, Ma nomar ladoni, ma nidaber. What can we say to my Lord and how can we speak? What do we have to say? In Psalm 75, 5, we see the second person plural. Al tarimu lamarom karnichem, tidabru b'tzavar atak. Do not lift your horns. To heaven and do not speak with an outstretched neck talking of prideful people in Genesis 34 20 uh, Hamor and Shem are negotiating with the men in their town and they come to the gate and they spoke with the men of their town and this is what they said in Proverbs 24.2, I'm talking about the wicked men. Uh, in the previous verse, do not envy them, for their hearts plot violence. Va'amal siftehem tidaberna. And their lips talk about making trouble. So the lips, remember, most of the dual body parts are feminine. So for svatayim, their lips, we see the feminine form tidaberna. We'll look at a few examples of these irregularities coming to the verb shalach. And we use the verb shalach in the pa'al, so you will be able to 
readily contrast the forms with the PL. The PL is not as frequently used, but it does show up. In Deuteronomy 32:24, uh, in the Song of Moses, when he describes a time when the people will be disobedient, and then God will send the various calamities. And he starts off with a list of these calamities, Mezerah, Ulechumei Reshef, um, a kind of famine, and also pestilences. And then the middle of the verb is the I will send part, and it's Ashalach Bam, I will send among them. So it's stronger than the Shalach and Pa'al, but more particularly we want to notice that in the Pa'al, I will send is Eshlach, it's two syllables, Eshlach, this is Ashalach, it's got three syllables. In 2 Kings 8, 12, the prophet Elisha, Elisha, is speaking to Hazael. He begins to weep. And Hazael says, well, why are you weeping? And Elisha says, because I know the evil that you're going to do to the Israelites, including setting fire. And so here it doesn't say to kindle a fire. It says to send fire. You see it. Uh, in the second person, Elisha is talking to Hazael. He said, you will send the fire. Tishalach be'ish. In Deuteronomy 7.20, uh, Moses is encouraging the people that if they will keep the laws, that God will take care of them. And he's going to destroy the enemy in various ways, including sending the hornet. Moses says, he will send the hornet. Et ha Yishalach. In the Pa'al, Yishlach. In the P'el, Yishalach. In Psalm 80, we find a feminine third person singular. She will send out, talking about the vine, appears to be a masculine noun really, but the entire reference in verse 80 uh, is all feminine. Her bows and her shadow in the previous verse. And here also, Kitsi reha, it's her bows, tishalach, she will send them out, she will shoot them out. In Numbers 5, 3, talking of people who are ceremonial unclean, it says, Mizachar anikeva tishalechu el michutz lemachane. From both male until the female, you will send them out of outside of the camp because they're ceremonially unclean. In Genesis 12:20, Pharaoh is throwing Abraham and Sarah out of Egypt for the first time. Ve'itzav alav paro anashim, and Pharaoh put a command on his men, ve'yishalachu oto, and they sent him. The men who have the command are sending out uh, Abraham ve'et tishto and his wife. In the pa'al. You would have yish lechu, but this is yishalchu. A verb ending in he, uh, kasa, kisa, to cover. In Jeremiah 46, 8, Jeremiah is giving a prophecy about Egypt. He's comparing the country to the river, the Nile. The river says, a'ale, I will rise, echase, eretz, I will cover the earth. In Deuteronomy 13, 8, covering uh, your family members which are off worshiping idols. The law is very clear not to have any pity on that person. Literally, do not cover him, do not shield him. In Job 16, 18, Job cries out to God, Eretz al techasi dami. O oh, earth, do not cover my blood. The blood is uh, crying out. He feels like he's being unjustly persecuted. He's trying to make his case before God. And he says, you know, let that cry go up. Just as it says in Genesis that Abel's, the cry of Abel's blood continued to cry out to God. In Proverbs 10, 6, Brachot l'rosh tzadik u'figashayim yechaseh chamas. A parallel construction. Blessings are on the head of the righteous, 
and you have to read this backwards, violence, he will cover, yechaseh, the mouth of evildoers. In Proverbs 10, 12, a verse that you probably know, sin'ah te'orem medanim va'al kol pishaim te'chaseh ahava. Love covers all wrongs. The love is feminine, therefore it's she will cover. In Exodus 14, 28, here comes the water, v'yashuvu hamayim, v'yichasu et harechev, v'et haparashim, l'chol chel paro habaim acharehem, bayam, lo nishar bahem ad echad. So the waters, mayim, are plural. Here they are returning. They will cover, they are covering. The riders, the chariots, and everything that belonged to Pharaoh. We're going to move on to the Nephal, and there are certain verbs, as we said before, which generally appear in Nephal, and one of them is the, this root, lachem, lehilachem, which means to do war. So part of the reason I wanted to put these two together, the PL and the Nephal, is that the Nephal also has a clue of having an extra syllable, but the vowels are different. In the PL, where we had adaber, tidaber with a shva, here we have elachem, also notice it's three syllables, but the vowels are different. Tilachem, and so all these future forms here, excepting the aleph, are with a chirik, and in the pl, they are all with a shva. Otherwise, they look quite similar. So actually, I couldn't find any other singular forms. There are places where it says, I will fight, or or you will fight, but they are all expressed in the Vav conversive with just the perfect conjugation. Uh, in this case, we're talking about Yehuda, and because that's feminine, it will be you, she will fight. So it's the third person feminine, singular form. Vagam Yehuda, Tilachem, Birushalayim, Zechariah 14, 14. In Exodus 14, 14, again at the brink of the sea, Yehovah yilachem lachem, and Yehovah, he will fight for you. In 1 Kings 20, 23, the advisors to the king of Aram are explained to him that they shouldn't fight on the enemy turf. The mountains of the Israelites belong to the gods of the Israelites. And he says, Ve'ulam nilachem itam bamishor. But if we fight, if we will fight with them on the plain, then he says that we can be stronger, the army of the king of Aram. So uh, in this case, the nun is not for the nephal. Uh, actually, I should have mentioned this. As you go into the nephal in the future tense, the nun is dropped, and the conjugation is indicated, as always, by the vowels, but there is no nun. Here, this nun is for we will. So it's a bit confusing because in the perfect and the participle, you see the nun in every case. But here, this nun is for we will. Here in Deuteronomy 1.42, Moses is recounting the time when the spies came back and then everybody became afraid. And they were commanded to go up and take the land, but they wouldn't go. And then the next day they said, oh, we're so sorry, we should have gone. And then Moses said, no, you can't go now because this time God will not be with you. And so it says, lo ta'alu, do not go up, v'lo tilachamu, and do not, you will not make war because God is not in their midst. In Joshua 10, 34, Joshua is with his soldiers and they're moving from Lachish to Eglon and then they're going to attack it. So we see, Vayilachamu, and they made war on, on it. Here is a nifal ending in ayin. Uh, remember, in most cases, when you have verbs ending in ayin or chet, they're going to get an extra vowel, and we're going to see that. In Genesis 21-24, Fichol is making a pact with Abraham, and he says, Swear to me, Vayomer Abraham anuchi. Ishaveya, 
he says I will square. So now we see an extra vowel under the I-N. In Deuteronomy 6.13, appended to the review of the commandments, Et Yehovah Elohecha Tira v'oto ta'avod uvishmo tishavea. So uh, the, the object is Yehovah, your God, you will fear. We see it's uh, second person singular directed to each individual. Motota avod him you will serve. Uvishmo and his name Tishavea you will swear. Extra vowel. But then again, there are irregularities, but you can still recognize the verb. In Genesis 24 9, uh, Abraham has commissioned his servant to go out and find a bride for Isaac, and they do this swearing ceremony where he puts his hand under his thigh. Vayishavalo, and he and he swore to him. The servant swore to Abraham that he would do what he asked him to do. In Leviticus 5.4, talking about different uh, conditions under which you would have to offer a guilt offering, and one of these is if you swear sort of carelessly, Tishava Levate. In this case, it is feminine, she will swear, because the nefesh is the one doing the swearing, and nefesh is feminine. In the plural second person form, you, all y'all, will not swear. Bishmi la sheker, in, uh, to swear falsely by my name. So previously, we are told to take oaths in his name, to swear in his name, if we make a promise in his name. But here, it's bishmi la sheker, in my name, falsely as a lie. In Genesis twenty six thirty one, Isaac is making a pact with the fijo. Here we see the third person together. Vayashkimu, they both got up in the morning early. Vayishavu ish la'achiv. And they swore, each man with his brother. We're going to look at one more verb in the nifal, and that is a verb that begins with yud. It's a word you know, Yeshua, Yeshua for salvation, to be saved. We have seen in other cases where the initial yud becomes a vav, and that is something that happens here. From Psalm 18.3, Muhulal ekra Yehovah umin oivai ivasheya. Just looking at the how to pronounce that, you have aleph, it has a vowel. The next thing has to be a consonant. It has to be a vav. You see, it's got a dagesh in the middle of the vav. It's a grammatical marker. But the vav has its own vowel. There are never two vowels in a row. So it's not u a at all. It's e va shea. Sometimes in the nifal, like with lacham and shava, it's hard to see why they would be passive. But this is very clearly passive. I will be saved. In Jeremiah 4.14, we have a second person female. You will be saved. Speaking of Jerusalem, Kapsimere alibech, uh, wash the evil from your heart, Yerushalayim, lema'an tivashei, that you will be saved. In Jeremiah 23, a prophecy of the righteous branch, Biyamav tivasha Yehuda. In his days, in the days of the righteous brands, Tivasha, she will be saved. And who is that? Yehuda, it's feminine. In Psalm 80, verse 3, a supplication. Elohim hashivenu v'ha'er panecha v'nivashea, with that injunctive hey at the end. God, return us and shine your face and we will be saved. In Isaiah 30, 15, a lovely promise, Kiko Amar Adonai Yehovah, Kedosh Yisrael, Beshuva Vanachat Tivasheun, where this says, the Lord Yehovah, the Holy One of Israel, in repentance and rest, you will be saved. Binun, at the end of this form, is it's called the paragogic nun and nobody really knows it's it's from an older form of the language it really doesn't have any meaning and we've talked about it other places but it is quite common but it's lovely to think that in repentance and rest 
we will be saved. So that covers PL and Nephal. Next time, another binyan. I pray this has been useful to you as we wait. Keep your eyes on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.